preacher shouted and the deacon yelled, Amen. We gathered round that bounty and started digging in. The mamas helped the youngins place before they helped their own. And the deacon snatched him chicken breasts till all those breasts were gone. The preacher's wife was helpful refilling all our cups with sweet iced tea and Kool-Aid and Cokes and 7-Up. Some Christians sat in lawn chairs and some just spread a pallet down. It was fun to have a singing and a dinner on the ground. When all had made a trip or two around that big buffet, it was time for cookies, cakes, and pies that all the ladies made. Old Benny turned a handle and Billy sprinkled salt. That homemade cream would sure taste good with that cobbler bubble broth. Fat Daddy's cold, sweet melon sent a fragrance to the air. A single slice, or two, or three, for everybody there. So many kids to play with. There was laughter all around when we had an all-day singing and a dinner on the ground. Baptist belly satisfied. The congregation fed. The ladies covered what was left and another prayer was said. The preacher asked the Lord to bless the ones who came to sing and witness through their music of what God's grace would bring. They sang beneath a giant tent full of folding chairs. Some folks sang along and clapped and we'd often pause for prayers. As stars replaced the sunshine and fireflies danced and teased, the mamas fanned their sleeping tots, and we kids played hide and seek. It was like a special holiday when the Sunday rolled around that we had an all-day singing and a dinner on the ground. Hey, thank you. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Man, wasn't that fun? You just don't do that no more. I'm going to the schools. You know, I go to the schools. I do all ages, mostly adults. But when I go to the schools, I do K through 6th grade. And I'm teaching these kids a thing or two about our old Southern culture. And it's so funny because I got a story called Hog Killing Days. And before I tell it, I ask the kids, you know, do you know what chitlins are? And of course, none of them do. And the first time I ever told it, I said, raise your hands, boys and girls, if you know where bacon comes from. Do you know where bacon comes from? That's right. See, he knows. He's a country boy. All right, everybody in there raised their hands. I called on this little girl right on the front row. And you know what she told me where she thought bacon came from? The grocery store. <laughs> And I said, boys and girls, I got my work cut out for me today. So by the time I left, they knew what lard was and chitlins and cracklings and where bacon came from and all kind of good stuff. And it's so fun to see them learn about our Southern culture because I believe that's something they need to know about, don't y'all? But you know, having said that, I think I'm going to tell you about hog killing days. There was, I was a... Uh, the only granddaughter on the farm, there were 14 grandchildren, and I was the only girl. Nobody wanted to play with me because I was a girl, and you know, there was one cousin I had, and his name was Ricky Glenn, and he would play with me. As Bubba would say, he, he was the only grandson that would play pretty with Tina, Tina being me. So. We spent summers there, and I'm going to tell you something, we had the best time, but summers weren't the only time of year that things got special in the home. Summers on Fat Daddy's farm were always exciting back then. Three wonderful months of adventure and fun for myself and Ricky Glenn. But all that have beginnings also must have ends. Before we knew it, Summer's heat was replaced by autumn winds. The pines around the farmhouse spread a blanket on the ground made of fallen needles, no longer green, but brown. T 
Tan bare feet returned to shoes when September chilled her breeze. And cotton shorts soon changed to jeans. It was time to wear long sleeves. The chimney was puffing clouds of smoke and we breathed a vaporous fog, which meant that conditions were perfect for killing the fattest hog. Now, I never witnessed a slaughter, nor did I make that request. But once that was done, I witnessed the fun of seeing that creature processed. The hollow was buzzing with action. It was a special time of year. So many things for kids to learn once hog killing day was here. Oliver Wooten built a fire beneath a huge black pot and he had stirred till the lard had settled and the cracklings rose to the top. He would feed that fire and stir all day. That job didn't seem too hard. I used to love to watch him as he patiently cooked out lard. Now sometimes he'd let me help him when he stopped to catch his wind. Then he'd wipe his sweaty brow and neck, then back to work again. When Bubba cleaned the chitlins, we kids were captivated, cause she seemed to find enjoyment in what I would have hated. All day long, folks chopped and boiled and smoke billowed to the skies. And some did this, and some did that, and Fat Daddy supervised. They worked until the sunlight could no longer find the hollow. Then supper time, a good night's sleep, then resume tomorrow. We gathered round the table adorned by Bubba's feast. There were biscuits and some gravy and lots of fresh cooked beast. Oh, Fat Daddy ate a platter full of boiled fat meat. There wasn't a single part of pig that that big man would eat. The ham was in the smokehouse. The freezer had been filled. And tomorrow, they'd grind sausage on an old-time sausage meal. The laughter in the kitchen the aroma in the air. If I close my eyes and reminisce, I almost feel I'm there. The fragrance fill the hollow from Fat Daddy's farm to phase. I cherish the memories of days gone by, especially those hog killing days. <laughs> Tell them about my Fat Daddy book here. Yeah, Show up my Fat Daddy book there, Rob. Model that for me. Rob here is modeling my Fat Daddy's Watermelon and Other Tales from the Hollow, the best book of Southern Tales you'll ever read right there in your hand. 28 Southern Tales guaranteed to leave you with a warm and fuzzy feeling. Ain't that right, Rob? Absolutely good stuff. That's right. Y'all come on and get one. Thank y'all so much for listening to a couple of my tales. Katrina Estes Hill, y'all.